Hey, think back to when you were a little kid and you had the idea of a treasure chest. What would be in your treasure chest? I know when I'm a little kid, I'm thinking gold bars and diamonds and rubies and just cash and coins. We had these kind of fancies as a child. And it's important to kind of get back as we talked about. So if we want to be the best language artists possible, the best writers and creators, we need to grow back, not grow up, because we loved the largest when we were the smallest, and our imagination was the biggest when we were our smallest selves. And so I want you to just jot down the starting point of your journal. And your, right now, in your current teenage mind, what would be inside a treasure chest for you? What, what valuables would be inside a chest like this? Would it be money? Would it be, would it be shoes or some kind of supreme item? Or I mean, what would it be for you right now? Just jot it down and think about it. In your current self, what would be in a treasure chest? And then put a line underneath that and write down to your, go back to your childlike self. What do you think getting in that childlike mindset what would be in your treasure chest in, in your small child's mind? And see, when I was a small child, I'd go to visit my grandma Schultz in Michigan every year. My, my little brother, Stuart, and I would go with my dad. And she had these, these skeleton keys. And I was fascinated by these skeleton keys. My grandma told me they had, they had magic power in these skeleton keys. And when my grandma was really old and I was really young, when old people talk to young people, young people believe them. But she would never let me keep them. I was kind of thinking, problems. Not yet. you're not ready yet for the power, you're not ready yet for the magic. And she had this thing which I call a treasure chest. It's this little tin box, but when I'm young, it felt like this treasure box right here. And she'd say how you take the skeleton key and, and you open it up, and the, and the greatest treasure in the world, the best treasure you can ever have is hidden inside this treasure chest. But you can't open it until you understand how the power and the magic of the skeleton key works. And so every year I would go visit my grandma in Michigan and I'd ask to see the keys, and she'd let me point out the keys, but she would never let me take them home. And then one particular time, in fact, it was the last time we were in Michigan. My brother and I didn't know it was going to be our last time. But I'm visiting with my grandma, and she pulls me aside. And my grandma was a stern lady and a few words. And so when my grandma spoke, we listened. And she broke out the treasure chest. And she gave me these skeleton keys, and she put it in my hand. And then she gave me this big, thick leather book, which no kid was excited about a big book back then. And it's just words of life on it. And I thought it was like a book of spells. I'm like, what is this old lady thing? And she said, read this. And you can see, it's thick and it's large print writing. Read this. And then you'll understand how the magic of the skeleton key works. And you'll have the power to open the treasure chest. And there you'll find the most important treasure of life. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And so... Can I open the chest? And so my grandma and I, we, we went together and we, we opened up that little chest and I had this big look of disappointment because the, it was empty. There was nothing inside. And like my little kid self, I was expecting rubies and diamonds and gold and, uh, and I wanted to be polite. I said, Grandma, did you forget to put it in because there's nothing inside here? And she kind of chuckled and her little smoker laughed and she said, you'll see it when you're ready. You have to read this book of spells, this book of life first. And then she gave me this empty treasure chest, or so I thought, and these skeleton keys. And I can remember my brother and I, my brother and I, we'll talk about this later on, that when we were pulling out of the driveway this time, it was different than every other time we left my grandma's house. My grandma gave us this eerie wave as we pulled out, like she knew it was the last time she was going to see her grandkids. And even in driving, my brother was like, did you see that? I'm like, yeah, that was, that was kind of eerie. It's like... Somehow we knew, she knew even back then. And I remember getting on the plane and, and, and looking through this, this big book of words of life and I didn't really quite understand it. And I got home and a few months after my grandma passed away. And after my grandma died, I, I, I went back to that treasure chest and opened it and it was empty again. And I decided I'm gonna read the book she gave me. And I've read this book many times since then. And what's inside this book is all the great spiritual and philosophical words of life and love and happiness and friendship and doing good and the right thing. And it started me on my journey to becoming a spiritual seeker and, and, and be a philosopher of my own and later becoming a, a writer. And it all really started in this book. And <clears throat> after I read the book, I almost just wept in gratitude. And I went to my garage and I grabbed the skeleton keys and I opened up 
this treasure chest. And I realized it wasn't empty after all. Right there, all along, I was ready to see it, was one word my grandma had written in her old lady cursive on the bottom of that tin box of my treasure chest. It's the one word that every word inside the book of spells talked about. It's the greatest secret to life. That's what makes all of us one. <coughs> the one word my grandma had written in the bottom of that treasure chest, which she said is the greatest treasure you can ever find in life. It's four letters. L-O-V-E. -E, love. That is it. That's the secret to life. It is becoming as, as great and loving person as you possibly can, and then every day finding a way to give someone their own skeleton key so they can find their own love. They can find a way to feel more loved and thus love other people more. There's no greater legacy in life than a legacy of love. See, the key to life is the love in your life. The love you give away to the lives of others and thus elevate their life to become a more loving person. That's the greatest treasure. It's not, it's not the gold bars, the rubies, the diamonds, or fame, or money, or status symbols. The key to life is unlocking all the love you have inside you. Bring it all out and giving away all that love every single day. Deliberately, intentionally. It's always said, don't be a teeter totter leader. If to do something on purpose every single day to make someone feel for certain that they are loved. Make more people feel more loved so they can love other people more. More love. That's their greatest treasure. And for many years now, I've given out a skeleton key like this to every single one of my students, all 200 plus. And because of the pandemic of the COVID-19 this year, I, I can't give you your own key. I wish I could but I'm going to symbolically give it to you through YouTube this year. And I hope you put in the effort. Do the reading. Do the writing to develop yourself to become as most loving person as you possibly can. And give away that love every single day. There really is no greater treasure. And I'm so grateful to my grandma for helping become that giving tree, that teeter-totter leader, that someone who intentionally focuses all their life on love. Placing love first matters more than first place. When you make love the most important thing in your life, your life becomes so important in the lives of other people because you help them understand the secret too, that love is why we're here and the greatest way to use our lives is to unlock the love we have inside and give it to other people. I hope you'll find that magic too. As I say every day, be kind to yourselves, be kind to each other. I love you all big, giant, much.